All right, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, but a little bit chilly. Spring day here in paradise in the end times. Out at the end of the road in the Point Lonesome Swamp on this lovely Sunday morning. I believe we're at March 7th, 2021. And, uh, so let me uh, let me test the limits of the YouTube cop bots today. Uh, maybe I'll only have to uh, a for a couple of sentences out of this fine article. I want to uh, thank Sister Donna, Sister Donna, for sending me one of the most spot-on articles I have ever read about the corona panic talking about you know the reason I call it the corona panic this is talking about fear and from Russia today uh, is this coming out the same day uh, that I was doing my <coughs> video about what a just what a bunch of fucking little uh, embarrassing little panic-stricken clueless sheeple that uh, this planet has become. This came out, yep, it came out yesterday. I guess they heard, I guess this fellow heard my uh, videos and this was his point. Who is this guy? This is a fellow named John Scott Lewinsky. As a journalist, John Scott Lewinsky hustles around the world writing for more than 30 international news organizations covering news, lifestyle, and technology. And let's hope that uh, John Lewinsky still has a job on any mainstream media. And uh, let's hope I still have a channel uh, <laughs> here in the Doomosphere after sharing John's spot-on story. This, this is one of the best Corona Panic uh, articles I have ever come across. <clears throat> Take it away, John. From Russia Today. In COVID-19 mindset, panic has become a twisted new virtue. Heroes of old who conquered their fears would now be branded as idiots. There you go. Okay. The COVID-19 pandemic, otherwise known as the Corona Panic, has warped humanity's mindset, turning fear into an intellectual value. Panic is now the smart choice and those who reject it are considered dangerous barbarians. Yes, I am a dangerous barbarian for choosing to reject panic. Uh, here, as, these, as the entire planet just descends into just, just, a, just an embarrassing herd of panic sheeple. <clears throat> Sociologists, political theorists, and other experts credit, credit the ongoing corona panic with forging countless changes in global society. Some are practical, some psychological, some are temporary, while others will remain in a evolving forms. It is difficult to deduce if the most troubling change we are seeing really resulted from the viral crisis or whether it had been waiting under the surface noise of daily life for full exposure by COVID-19. For the first time in human history, fear is now considered a sign of intellectual superiority. While the choice 
to resist panic is seen as stubborn foolishness. Yes, for the first few weeks of the pandemic in early spring of 2020, panic ruled the day and lockdowns rolled across the world. The vast majority of us went to ground, whether it was to, quote, flatten the curve or just because no one quite knew what to expect from this virus. That seemed like a reasoned response to the situation, especially considering that the contagion originated in China, a nation whose external communications are at best reticent or at worst outright lies. As weeks stretched into months, living with the bug every day unveiled certain self-evident truths. From whom the virus attacked <clears throat> most aggressively, to how and why it spread, to how controllable the bug was with masks, social distancing, disinfectant, etc. Much of the evidence coming in from the CDC and university studies indicated COVID-19 was The virus was real, but it was dangerous, but oddly enough, that encouraging news, that encouraging news, which of course would get me, uh, would get this video ripped down off of uh, this channel, and I would get strike two if I actually voiced any encouraging news about the corona panic. Oddly enough, that encouraging news about corona panic is often discounted or ignored by the bunkered crowd who seem to root for infections to justify their anxiety. Anyone who acts upon reasoned reports with reduced concerns or even so much as allows his or her mood to lighten is dismissed or outright insulted as careless and ignorant. I am not referring to some doorknob liquor who denies the virus exists and flaunts safety precautions or political conspiracy fans who see any concerns over the bug as mere hype to control the masses. The individual who believes he or she can navigate this temporary crisis successfully until it concludes in a cure or a vaccine, who simply refuses to run screaming into a hazmat suit, is regarded as a clown. The opposite is therefore true. The person who panics and lives in constant fear is somehow more intelligent. If you do not stay locked in your bedroom in favor of going about your life. You are a fool. Even worse, you are a reckless fool who lacks compassion for the people you might infect. Regardless, the underlying theme is crisis and desperation in place of challenge and problem solving. As convenient partisan simplicity swoops in to blame it all on a political philosophy, 
Yes, as convenient partisan simplicity swoops in to blame it all on political philosophy, the terrified tap dance can reach across the political spectrum. California's progressive-dominated state and local governments revel in their daily war room broadcast and arbitrary orders restricting the citizenry with or without legal authority. Independent thinkers who long for some restoration of, of normality while living with the viral risk <clears throat> are looked as witless, selfish, or outright criminal. Before the right assigns this breathless overkill to progressive hypersensitivity, it should look to the conservative government of the UK as Prime Minister Boris Johnson throws out random edicts at a manic pace, demanding the British population hunker down in a manner not seen since the Blitz. Anyone who does not hide in the underground is a village idiot. <clears throat> It is a certainty this phenomenon is yet another product from our age of narcissism, shaming others for not climbing aboard Doom's bandwagon is little more than a quick, lazy, and unearned ticket to some form of intellectual superiority. Look at me! I'm scared because I am smart. The one underlying principle, you know, of the corona panic is ongoing fear and the dismissal of anyone who does not share it. That worldview runs against the long flowing tide of human civilization. Before 2020, fear was to be avoided. While it was not necessarily an emotional reaction of weakness, it was a threat to progress and civility. Yes, it used to be that fear was a threat to civility. Oh. <clears throat> Let's use popular culture as our demonstrative library. In Dune, fear is the, quote, mind killer. Sheriff Brody must ignore his fear of the water to kill a deadly shark. The evil ghost of poltergeist, quote, know what scares you. Rocky Balboa must overcome his fear to reclaim his heavyweight title. The heroine of V for Vendetta can only fight oppression once she sheds her fear. In Star Wars, fear threatens to turn Rey to the dark side of the Force. Authors from William Shakespeare to Jane Austen to a Natalie Ribikov to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to Harper Lee to Alice Walker made overcoming fear a central theme of their masterpieces. If you want to turn the pages back to an era before the English language existed as we know it, Beowulf became one of the Western world's first great heroes by conquering the fright caused by Grendel and his mother. Turn back another era and you will read how Gilgamesh overcame his fear of death en route to becoming a hero. Finally, if we allow a little old-time religion into the fray, and check in on the gospel writers, we are told that Jesus wept in fear 
the night before defeating its temptations and facing the crucifixion. Halfway around the world, the Buddha stated, quote, the whole secret of existence is to have no fear. Never fear what will become of you. Close quote. Thank you, the Buddha. The current psychological zeitgeist would ridicule all of those figures or those authors and their protagonist as hasty and brainless for not running away and hiding from a threat indefinitely until it did its damage or decided to go away. Those in this cult of alarm, this cult of alarm will say all of those references are fiction and Corona Panic is real life. I would motion over to Joseph Campbell and remind them that myths and their labels indicate cultural values. No one ridiculing their fellows for not wearing a mask while alone in their cars, dining outside of their own kitchens, or even longing to get back to their workplaces has any part to play in any stirring touchstone story or in the real world events that inspire them. Perhaps this new worship of trepidation is another symptom of the corona panic that will pass. Until then, we live in hope for a vaccine against our 2020 affliction of dull, self-adulatory dread. <laughs> Amen, uh, Brother John Lewinsky, for uh, spelling out uh, the real... Oops. I better quit while I'm ahead, although I guess the, uh, I, I, I guess the uh, YouTube cop bots stopped listening to me long ago, but anyway, uh, all right, now that I got that pleasant task off my chest, uh, maybe it's time to start thinking about planting petunias. Planting petunias. As here comes another springtime in the end times. <sighs> Cannot think of a better way to uh, fight panic than plant some petunias. I suggest you get out there and plant some petunias. Well, you still can. Bye, guys.